particles collide, then we can assume that the collision is elastic. That means that I'm just making a supposition that collision is elastic, and if I make that supposition that collision is elastic, then that means that kinetic energy would be conserved. That means for elastic collisions, the total kinetic energy before collision must equal the total kinetic energy after collision. So, so just like you have for elastic collisions, just like you have um, the you have the momentum equation. You can have another equation for conservation of kinetic energy. So total kinetic energy before collision is equal to the total kinetic energy after collision. That's another equation. Guys, in reality, it's almost impossible because when two particles would collide, there would be some form of heat energy or sound energy being produced. So energy converts into other forms during collision. But we make an assumption that for elastic collisions, kinetic energy is conserved. In case if you're wondering that why would we make such an assumption, we make such an assumption because in some cases, like when you talk about gaseous particles in a container, those are such small particles, so they lose very little heat and sound energy. So in that case, this is going to be a very close to being valid assumption so yeah first thing first what is elastic collision and elastic collision is one in which kinetic energy before collision is equal to kinetic energy after collision if kinetic energy would be lost it must have been converted into some other form maybe heat and sound but total energy would be conserved but in elastic collisions you would make an assumption that the total kinetic energy would be conserved as well so First, momentum would be conserved, but also the kinetic energy would be conserved. So guys, I've done a bit of an algebraic manipulation over here. This has never been asked in exam. I can't assure you that it won't be asked, but I feel it won't be asked because it's a little longer derivation. But somehow it's like elimination of M1 and M2 from the two equations. We've canceled halves, put M1s on one side of both equations, M2 on the other side, took out common, and I divided the two equations and used a bit of factorization to come to this point and rearrangement to come to this point. So this basically is u2 minus u1. It's the difference of velocities before collision. You can say it's the relative velocity of approach. And this is v2 minus v1. That's the relative velocity of separation. So there are two ways you can say this is a statement and you should know both of them. One is, and this is only applicable to elastic collisions because I solved and simplified it out of conservation of kinetic energy. That for elastic collisions, the relative velocity of separation is equal and opposite to relative velocity of approach. I repeat myself. And this is something you have to remember. I've written both the statements down in red over here, which you have to remember in this formula, which is very, very important for you. So the relative velocity of separation is equal to and opposite to the relative velocity of approach. And if you use the term speed instead of velocity, then you don't have to say opposite because speed doesn't carry any direction. So either you would say relative velocity of approach is equal and opposite to relative velocity of separation, or you can say relative speed of approach is equal to relative speed of separation. And guys, the other thing you need to identify is that just like for momentum, I told you that I did all the formulas assuming all velocities are positive. So this is also assuming that all velocities are positive. So when you're using this formula, you have to learn this formula. There's no choice for that. When you're using this formula, you put any velocity with negative sign if it's towards the negative direction. Or you get any answer which is negative means it's traveling in the opposite direction as well. So please take care of using signs when you're applying this particular formula. And then you have to remember these two special cases of elastic collisions. Please do remember there are certain specific things about it. They have to be equal masses. 
and they have to be colliding elastically. If two equal masses collide elastically, then they interchange their velocities. After collision, second particle will start moving with first, first particle's velocity and first particle will start moving with the second particle's velocity. So they will just simply exchange their velocities if you will check two conditions. Firstly, it has to be elastic collision. Secondly, both particles have to have equal masses. If that's not the case, then you go back to formulas and apply them to figure your answer out. And if a particle collides with a barrier, then it rebounds with the same speed. So that means it collides if it is elastic. So if it collides with the barrier, it's going to rebound with the same speed. So if it collides with 10 meters per second right, it's going to rebound with 10 meters per second towards the left.